Can a movie's press jacket be more entertaining than the film itself? Nope, this isn't America's Sweethearts because we already did that one. We're talking movies, we're talking Don't Worry Darling, starring Florence Pugh, Chris Pine, and Harry Styles. Story by Carrie Van Dyke and Shane Van Dyke, and Katie Silverman, who wrote the screenplay. It was directed by Olivia Wilde. Chris, keep calm and carry on. I've been waiting for someone like you, someone to challenge me like a good girl. Everybody and welcome to this week's episode of How'd You Like That Movie. Today we're going to be talking about the candy apple and chrome covered piece of dog shit that is Don't Worry Darling 2022. Hey Scott, take us away. <laughs> right, well, what's, what's the point of fucking doing a pod if, if you bury the lead, <laughs> right? Like you might as well just be like, and that's a wrap. <laughs> I don't know, man. If depending on who you considered the lead in this, if uh, if it's Harry Styles, he got buried by the fucking subject matter, the fucking script, fucking Florence Pugh, his awful dancing, a bunch of stuff. So yeah, oh, he's, okay. <laughs> and the apple red and chrome fucking dog shit. All right, so okay, I'm gonna start with what I actually enjoyed in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, so one is Florence Pugh. I think yeah, she killed it. Fucking she right killed here. it uh and i think i think we talked about this before that like you know for actors and actresses that are like coming up now like she's she's gonna be killer like she she's gonna have a very long career same with anna taylor joe i think we discussed as well like this is your future hollywood right here 100 percent. yeah these are the new hollywood like leading ladies and leading men or whatever we're calling them today yeah, if you if you you know these are your Glenn Close and Meryl she- Streeps of the future, <laughs> but hundred percent Chris Pine, he did a good job. Agree, disagree? Yeah, yeah, he yeah he did fine. I mean, I think he the the script is not good. Like the screenplay is not good. So you can see these quality actors like struggling to try and make something out of nothing. So yeah, sure, I'll give him a he did, he did great. He did well in his role. Um, essentially he's, uh, playing a, uh, who was Jordan it? Peterson. Yeah. Jordan Peterson character, right? Yeah, uh, Jordan Peterson like... could only wish to be as charismatic and handsome as him though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just wearing that, the button that, down, that is, but not wearing a, the button down. Just showing that the is a, uh, Chris, Chris Pond is Jordan Peterson is like Jordan Peterson in his Homer Simpson flexing in the mirror fantasy. You know what I mean? No, I, I haven't watched The Simpsons in a very long time. But, you know, you could have just gone with, you know, playing Chris Langford in the Chris Langford story is Chris Pine. We, and then <laughs> we Mark, could have just gone Mark with Mark Wahlberg that. or something like that, or Brad Pitt, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like, let's be honest, uh, I play Brad Pitt in the Brad Pitt story because you actually had those things reversed. reversed so, <laughs> Okay. Um, Harry Styles, he did okay. No, he did not do okay. I, I, I said, you know what? It, it was like, like watching when you fucking go, Pinocchio, the wooden fucking doll. I can sing, I can dance, I can fly, do anything I try. Literally, that is what I felt watching fucking Harry Styles on the screen. Go ahead. What I was going to say is when you go in with low expectations <laughs> and, and, you know, they exceed those expectations, you're like, he did okay. Right? You can't, you can't fault him for the cast he was cast with. Right, because they are top tier cast, like they're you top can say tier no. actors. You do realize that if it's like, hey, so we want you to be in this thing, and there's all these amazing fucking actors. Do you think you can handle it? Remember, he's already fucking rich and famous. Like, it's not like he's like grinding it out as an actor, and he really needs them. This is his big fucking break. Sure, it was going to be his big break on, as a film actor. Uh, and was I think it we, Dunkirk his big break? Well, he has a very minor role in Dunkirk. Like, he's not... And, I mean, Dunkirk doesn't even have a lot of dialogue or anything like that. And it's being handled by fucking Christopher Nolan. Like, there's a lot of risk being... You know, Olivia Wilde has only directed one other film at this point. You know what I mean? And this may be the last time she fucking directs a film for a while. I doubt I mean, that. 
this, okay. the, this movie had a budget of 35 million and it made 86 it doubled but what did we always talk? so the press on this the, the best press they got was the fact that all the drama oh 100 percent. But we like, talk about this all the time you could have up to a hundred percent like so you need to re, you know recruit over double in order to pay, pay back all your media stuff, right? So yes, they may have broken be. even. Yes, they may have broken even. And made a little uh, bit of jingle jangle there. Well, what I was going to say is this could be like, because maybe they, you know, Warner Brothers didn't want to put a lot of money into marketing. And that's why all this drama came out. So, yeah, you think it might have all, all the bullshit around it might have been just contrived? Like, yeah, there is one, there is one, um, one thing that you know all the meme people and everything like that missed on this all the meme people <laughs> memes yeah oh, meme. all the meme... I thought you said mean people like no meme, meme people. you know because there there is a shit ton of memes about this especially you know the harry styles chris pine spinning yes the fact that and if our video editor for the youtube channel doesn't do this i'm gonna be super upset the fact that that they didn't split Oliver Stone's JFK with Kevin Costner saying down to the left, down to the left, and and slowly doing the Harry Styles, did he spit, did he not, and try to slow motion to see if you actually see the projectile. Magic spit. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? Again. Back and to the left. 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 Yeah, mm. be like and down to the left, and like the fact that no one did that, I'm very upset because that okay. would have won the internet. That would have won the internet. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, maybe don't let your girlfriend uh convince you to be in a movie that is so okay. Let, I I, I want to just talk about just like the train wreck that this film is so. She Olivia Wilde does Booksmart, which is super. It's a fucking fantastic film, but it only had like a three million dollar budget or four million dollar budget, and it's you know contemporary. It's got a great screenplay behind it. It and it so I mean contemporary in the sense it's set in normal day to day times, right? She goes from that to a thirty five million dollar period piece, essentially a period piece because and I don't we're not going to spoil the ending, uh, you know. So it is essentially a period piece. And it's got all like crazy fucking art direction, crazy cinematography, which by the way is fucking beautiful. Uh, and we'll we'll touch on that in a bit because it's really the only good thing about the film other than Florence Pugh. Um, I just think that it was like way, way like maybe don't and I get it. Sometimes directors like you get the little one, you do it, and then they give you a fucking Marvel movie or something like that, and you can pull it off. And the reason I'm saying Marvel movies is because they're super complicated because of all the CGI and all that bullshit. Like but you got to fucking know your limits, man. And like, I don't think that the script itself was really great. And then it just and this got is, fucking worse. Yeah. The, the script was from the writer of book. Like, she's the one that rewrote the the script play from, um, or the script script from the Van Dyke brothers. Uh, but Katie Silverman is the one who wrote Booksmart. Well, there was a bunch of them on Booksmart. There was like four writers on Booksmart. And it makes me wonder if, because of those other writers, that script is better. And again, that script is like a fun little comedy. Uh, I mean, it's produced by Will Ferrell and uh, what's his name? Uh, Adam McKay. Adam McKay. Um, you've got her ex-husband in it as well. Like there's a great comedic cast. Comedy is is very, very different uh, than drama. And especially like this kind of weird dystopian thing. Um and the period aspect, man, like you've just got a lot of fucking moving parts. And I just don't think that Olivia Wilde, I'm not suggesting that she's never going to be the director that can handle this. I just don't think that she was the director to handle this at this point in her career. Listen, we all know what this is about. Because she didn't call me up to uh, take over the reins. Yeah, 100 percent, man. Make the this fact that, that you know, Booksmart comes out and now there's a fucking bidding war. To get her next movie, it's okay to be jealous, Chris. Do you, do you know okay. what they do? You, do you actually have numbers on what they paid in that bidding war? Because yeah, it was going crazy, man. Everybody wanted her and for the next picture because of Booksmart. Because didn't Booksmart do ten million on a three million dollar, three point five million dollar budget? Like or something? That. Yeah, yeah it, so it, was like, it was. It was the 
ah uh, man i'm trying to think but yeah it like it was the one that like word of mouth just kept it going right like it just kept it in theaters because everybody who stumbled upon it enjoyed it and then went and tell told all their friends and family about but it they so then those get, like gave her like a 10 uh uh it's not a 10 percent. sorry a uh what is that thousand percent increase in fucking budget like a times 10 increase in budget from 3.5 to 35 million like those are fucking big number changes man. yeah but i like, think a lot of that is look at the cash she has now right like florence Pugh would command more than book smart chris pine alone would have commanded more than oh 100 percent. i i, I totally so i, I think some you. of the budget is the casting budget as well because that you having um more well-renowned actors than it than it was before because you know whatever you're saying like with book smart sure, probably sure. even like even sudeikis probably table, was which, which i i can't see it being 10 million but let's say even this 10 million dollars as just for your you know high the high end part of your cast and it, let's say your whole cast right because mm. those minor players day players aren't going to cost that much um and outside that there's not a ton of extra cast um, and then you're filming in LA, which that alone would cost. So, yes, and you're and filming at the piece. Kaufman Desert Heart. Period pieces are like, they're a big fucking red flag for a producer, right? Because there is a ton of fucking extra money that has to go into shit that has nothing really to do with like production, right? Like car driving yeah, like down the, the cars. street. Yeah, like, so per, that's a perfect example, right? So the a car, car driving down the street. That's got to be a fucking 1955 blah 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 versus uh, a two th- what it was 2010 or 2020 or whatever even like that car you just go get you don't have to fucking go to a specific place and get period piece cars make sure they run okay make sure you take care of them the insurance on them is fucking crazy like it's the fucking well, actually so so you know you're you're just literally you know, talking in circles, making the point of why this budget ballooned 10% or oh, 100%. 30 oh, yeah. yeah. So it's not really the movie is just getting the stuff in there. So um, in terms of that, like, I don't think you can fault her for it. Well, I can fault her for bringing a period piece fucking script to the table. Absolutely. Like she but brought the, the script. The, like, Well, the script was on the 2019 blacklist. Like she didn't write this fucking script. She picked it oh. in terms of this is what I want to make as my next film. It's also not a great script. <laughs> it I needed a said... fucking hard script polish, man. Hard okay. script polish. Might even need a page one rewrite. I'm not quite Listen. fucking sure. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm going to say what I didn't like about this movie. Um, and can you say the third act? So we're just going to take the whole third act. That's what I did not like about this movie. Now I'm going to say something that is going to be a spoiler. So this, uh, uh, for all the listeners, if you haven't watched this movie, fast forward one minute in three, two, one, the fact that this third act became a bad commercial for the fucking metaverse Hopefully Zuckerberg fired all the marketing staff that he did with every other Facebook person that he fired recently. Hundred percent, man. I didn't even see it as that. I, 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 I thought the third act was. I liked that concept, and I just, I, uh, I actually and that's the thing. I agree with you. I think this movie is full of um, great concept, uh, great ideas. But no, um, fuck. What's the word I'm looking for? No, like, uh, like it's 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 a a lot like, of. Go ahead. You weren't able to bring it together. Like yeah, you weren't yeah, yeah. able to bring like. Couldn't it, execute it. it. Yeah, Bad execution. It's perfect. Exactly. Like the way I don't know if you've ever watched it, but on Netflix, um, Black Mirror. Have you ever seen yeah, that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking right, man. And sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's like meh. Yeah, so like if you took this movie and condensed it to one hour, this probably would have been an amazing black episode, uh, Black Mirror episode. Boom! Absolutely, and somehow they would put fucking my least favorite fucking. And you you would have you would have had the same cast because Black Mirror does get like fucking pretty good fuck like a star casts, right? So this is a, this is this is actually a perfect place for me to do my quote for the week. Uh, Jeffrey McCab of the Independent, the UK version. It has immaculate production and costume design. Beneath its polished, very stylish outer sheen, it's a hollow as... Hold on. 
But beneath its very polishing, it's as hollow as the lives of the pampered but empty-headed protagonists, which 100% is true. And that's where I came up with my candy apple red and chrome-covered dog shit. Because, yeah, it is beautiful to look at. But there is fucking nothing there. It's all top line, superficial fucking bullshit. This, I, I, I like, tr and you also don't give a fuck about any of the characters. He, I would argue that you don't even like Forrest Pugh's acting is great, but you actually don't even really fucking care that much about her character, like because you never, you never get anywhere that you do like any reason to care about her. You know what I mean? But she goes hey, from having. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm getting what you're saying. Uh, like even, um, sorry. Uh... I don't want to get the name wrong, but the, the character who played Margaret. So the first one to see the the headquarters, Kiki Landis, I believe yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that originally was supposed to be, it was supposed to be uh, Dakota Johnson. That was supposed okay. to play that role, but she had to uh, go out. Uh, she had to go out because of uh, that lost daughter. Is that the Netflix movie she made? There's some so, yeah. scheduling coffers. So, you know, Kiki Landis comes in with her and then she meets her boyfriend who plays her husband in this movie. But they completely cut out almost everything she was in. To yeah, the she's fact barely that, in the movie. Yeah, to the fact that she was like, I don't even need to go to the premiere or any press. Because or I've seen anything. all my stuff in the trailer. Exactly. So, so that's the thing, like, they built up like in the script they built up like you know how this community was close and then she was the first one that um you know that it happened to and you know they've kind of um excommunicata her right like so she's now like alone on an island but you never actually see that you're already at the end when she's like i'm at the end of my rope yeah and you know she does Whereas, so there was, there's never any like, you know, like build, build up. up. Like you don't, you don't, you don't get to know the character. And no tension. Descent, like descent, descent into madness or whatever it's going to be. It's just like here you are and here you're fucked up. <clears throat> yeah. No. Exactly. It's it's like if you if you took this premise and let's say you built it around, let's say you put it in. I'm not gonna give another like say another director's name or something but let's say you you built this in the style of let's say the invitation right where you have you're building towards the tension and everything the whole movie by by the time you get to you know it's 2020 and you need to have a fucking twist for some reason because not every fucking movie needs a twist but let's get to this twist right that twist would have paid off more as opposed to it was like the first what 35 minutes of this movie was just seen with 1950s music soundtrack yeah and then a different scene with a different 1950s song <laughs> it's like okay i'm like they paid a lot of money on the rights for these songs or uh, they're in the <laughs> uh, on that note i do want i do want to put out if you are a fan of like burlesque there is a cameo, I, and I'm going to spoil this on purpose because if you are a fan of Burlesque, I think you should watch it for this scene because it's fantastic. Uh, Dita Von Tees, Dita Von, Dita Von Tess, however you say it, uh, is in it, uh, who is like a like a world famous burlesque dancer. She has her uh, signature martini glass that she dances in. Uh, that was very cool to see her, and, and especially if you know the that artist, to recognize her and be like, oh, okay, well, there's a bunch of money that went into her being able to do some 1950s style burlesque uh but yeah like this show is all show no go you know what i mean mm -hmm. I um agree. i i so and, and i'm not going to get into the controversy of like whether shia LaBeouf was fired or whether he quit I, i'm under the impression he quit just because he released all the messages that showed olivia wilde being like please don't leave the production and he did i think he would have done a fantastic job is to the best of his ability with this script i think he would have been a much better actor to have there um my only comment in that is i honestly didn't see a reason of re-bringing it up two years after the fact right like why remake that comment and, and, and that's what i'm saying I, I, it makes me think that like it was all intentional yeah like you didn't hear fucking you know the Wachowski brothers 
two years before the matrix come out be like yeah and then fucking will smith passed on this fucker yeah right? <laughs> Uh, but would you agree? Do you think Shia LaBeouf would have done better in that role? Uh, Did it look like a shaved dog butt face? Uh, pretty much. Well, there you go. Perfect. I don't know. Like to me, to me, I think the role was rewritten kind of for Harry Styles because I don't see fucking Shia LaBeouf doing a tap dance on stage for no apparent reason for like a minute and a half. Dude. Oh, like, not even a minute and a half. Ever. Like in in reality, that. May- like in the timeline of that movie, that made it seem like it was a good fifteen fucking twenty minutes of this. What guy was going, the point of that? I, I'm yeah, like just, watching just this. I'm like, dance, 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 boy, of... dance! Like, what is fucking going on here? Like, fucking organ grinder monkey! Like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, yeah. I was like, especially when like... you see, especially when you get that third act turn, I'm like, it makes even less sense. Yeah, right, because I'm like. Again, I don't want to spoil it, but like when you see that third act and you go back to that dancing you're seeing, you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, and this is what I'm paying for is to fucking dance around like a monkey. Yeah. Um, but again, like I was saying, like in terms of what the the character could have originally been, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't really care. Right? Like whether it is Shallow Buff, like, come on, you could have fucking thrown you know who your I want- boy. You know who Your I think would have would have been good in there is, is Nicholas Holt. No, Nicholas Holt, but with uh, without a British accent. I found the British accent throw is it was like uh, threw me off as well because you know what's funny? Florence Pugh is fucking British. She did not use a British accent, but because Harry Styles is not a fucking actor, they let him just have his British accent. And like, yes, they live in Chicago. Anyway, they you know the idea that you can have a British person in the fifties, sure. But it just, I found it jarring every time he spoke because, like, everyone else is using, like, normal American accents. And then there's him all like, hello, I'm Harry Styles. You know what I mean? And I ignored her. And then this happened. And I feel like it's my fault. It's no one's fault, Alice. It was an accident. No. So he just said his own name during the whole movie yeah that's, that's, how, that's how much that's, he fucked it up that's how, he, <laughs> that's that's how you're how saying it was. he wasn't like i'm jack chambers he's like no i'm harry oh fuck <laughs> i'm harry styles i might um uh, the critics have fucking butchered this it gave a they gave it a 38 percent on rotten tomatoes who the fuck the 74 percent that that must just be harry styles fans or like Olivia Wilde, I don't know, with spoof fucking accounts. Like, I don't know how 74% of people, I guess it shows that fucking people are stupid. I don't know how 74% of people uh, can fucking enjoy uh, this fucking film. But I think 2022 is going to be the year that, you know, you got to watch Harry Styles in 1950s. Because isn't that other movie that's out on Prime uh, right what's now? It, the that, Policeman? My Policeman. It's also set in the 50s. I, I, yeah, and he's fucking supposedly awful in that too. Uh, and again, the idea of casting him, you know, as an LBGTQ character, it's got a lot of people fucking pissed off. They're like, really? We can't find a gay man to play a gay man in a fucking movie in 2022. And again, I, I understand there's a whole industry side of like you cast Harry Styles, you get a certain budget, you get a certain amount of like reach as far as your distribution and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I really hope that maybe Mr. Styles goes back to one direction or whatever fucking bullshit music career he had and just sees the fuck out of movies for a bit man like this is the fucking highest grossing male artist he's like the most famous man in the world go do that like because like i don't want to fucking see him in movies doing his fucking pinocchio thing or go take a fucking acting class or something like this is sort of like madonna like madonna is not a good actor because she and a lot of it actually stems from the fact that she's very good at live performance and live performance requires you to like you know you hit it and you keep moving and because it's live like there's you can't fucking change it on the fuck you know you got to roll with the punches on the fly but in film take after take after take after take you've got to be able to fucking like alter things when you need them altered or continue to deliver them successfully one take after another uh the guy has no fucking gravitas okay no fucking range before you continue i'm just gonna say this one I think, you know, when you're talking about Madonna and everything like that, I think every person put into the correct role could work very sure. well. Madonna was good at playing basically herself and desperately seeking Susan. I, oh, I was going to say, what about Evita? She did well in Evita. Sure, and she was good in A Which... League of Her Own where she played Madonna, <laughs> basically. Just like a, what, a 1940s so, version e- of Madonna? 
again, you just talked yourself in circles because you're like, she's not a good, but you just gave three examples. She, yeah, but she's she good at playing herself, basically, right? right? With a different so, name. So, yes, if you right want to role. play a pop, if you want a fucking pop star in a movie, go get fucking Harry Styles. Absolutely. World War II fucking soldier. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, 1950s fucking working dad or whatever he's supposed to be. <laughs> no, thank you. Gay 50s policeman. <laughs> No, thank you. Pop star, sure. I will give you that. Next time we got a fucking pop star role. So when we remake fucking A Star is Born uh, with, and we reverse the leads or whatever, uh, he can be the up-and-coming pop star. Well, why do you have to remake it? Why can't it just be a sequel? Where now, you know, Lady because Gaga's character... Born, we've been remade, what, five fucking times now? But that but is yeah, what they now you got really Lady Gaga's character taking Harry Styles' character and making him a star where she's, you know... Sure, yes. Boom. Boom. Call, call Paramount. Let's get it fucking made. It's called A Star Has Fallen. A Star Has Fallen. Um, I do think this is going to go to the Oscars for set design, uh, costume, costume. And, and cinematography. I was thinking maybe, uh, and it's a technical one too, but sound mixing. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they did yeah. have a I lot think, of that I, I think where. Do well, in the craft categories um because again like the the production work is great um even the editing's not bad uh i, I actually don't know how to fix this movie like normally i'm like well if you do this and you do that, I, I i think you just i'd have to see the actual original screenplay and see if there was a big difference between what was on the page and what got shot uh maybe a different director but again i almost feel like you got to go right back to the fucking script because this if if this script looks anything like the film then there's big problems with the script in the sense that the story again there, you haven't developed any care like anything any emotional connection to your characters your story arc's a bit weird but again that could have been something that happened in editing maybe they did shoot stuff maybe they didn't so i don't know i, I definitely don't recommend this film i do recommend the dop matthew uh labasque uh who and this is why i said a star is born he was the dop on a star is born Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, Pi. He's basically basically Darren uh, Afro. I can never say his last name. Afro Afroski Afroski, <laughs> Darren Af Afroski. Uh, I know I said that wrong. Uh, he's basically his DOP. I think all but like two of his films, um, like The Wrestler and one other, Matthew basically did right. So, hmm. yeah. Mm. And Florence Pugh, man, I'm looking forward to seeing... Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Oppenheimer. Yes, it's a Christopher Nolan film. That's going to look awesome. Uh, less less stoked to see Dune 2 after the boar fest that Stu, uh, Dune was. Dune 1 was. Uh, but Florence Pugh is going to be in that. And, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen her in Midsummer or Lady Macbeth, Lady Macbeth is fucking intense, too. And Midsummer is fucking blow your mind. Also great cinematography. Hey, it's radio, man. You got to keep talking. Oh, I thought we were done. You I was like, it, yeah, like <laughs> I look forward in seeing her in Thunderbolts. Oh, what's that? The next Marvel movie that she's in. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, oh, do you recommend this movie to anybody? Like, did you watch it with uh, your kids or anything? I, no, I, I watched it with my wife. Um, oh, I do want to talk about something before we go. I want to talk about the oral sex scene. I, I definitely want to talk about that. So, yeah, let's talk about your wife first, though. Do you want to talk about my wife with oral sex? No, yeah. no, no. What? No, you watched yeah. it with your wife. I did. Well, you always left me satisfied and smiling, so. <laughs> so. I don't want to talk about oral sex with your wife. I want to talk about the oral sex scene in the film but first, you watch. Well, it is this life. like a, a sex with Sue moment? Like you're you're gonna be like, listen, this is what you gotta do. All right, we we've heard it. We're like you gotta. <laughs> but, anyway, you anyway. saw it with your wife. Yeah, um, I would say literally, you know, like I like she she was lost in it. Like third, the third act fucking killed her when that reveal came in. She she was Did like, she this is bullshit on it. Yeah, she was like, this is now the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> like, she was like, this this just made it the stupidest fucking thing ever, right? I should have just used your wife's quote. That's that's <laughs> actually better than the one I got. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so that's what lost her on that movie. And, and it's, the, like, it was the same with me. Like, once that 
because it was literally like two twists in one, right? Because you had the, I thought the, you know, Olivia Wilde character of Bunny, that twist was fucking good. That right? was not good. I think that that actually, that twist, that twist is good in a different movie. Because if you're trying to make a conversation about like incels and like white male toxic masculinity and stuff, that actually yeah, but her crazy. her twist in terms of okay, we're I'm gonna spoil this one too. So fast forward thirty seconds and three, two, one. That the fact that she's in there knowingly just so she can have her fucking kids that died again. I think I, that... I, again, I I like that twist, but not in this film the way they're the story they're supposedly trying to tell right mm-hmm. i think that that's more like I, I know the island isn't the same but that kind of world right like people are making choices based on this you know some are being like sort of like i'm choosing to be in the matrix versus being forced to be in the matrix so i agree it's a cool twist it just doesn't work in this fucking film with the story they're trying to tell in this film in my opinion okay um but yeah, I do want to talk about the oral sex scene. So, I mean, Olivia Wilde considers herself like a feminist, progressive filmmaker. And so, like, yes, I really like uh, seeing him go down on her. I think that that's a very cool thing to be showing in movies or whatever. Although the first thing I could think of is, like, it reminded me of Tommy Wiseau and The Room when he's having sex with her, like, belly button. And Johnny does his best to penetrate the area around Lisa's belly button. <laughs> and if you want to check out the best like summary of the room check out the honest trailers on the room where yeah he's like vampire humping her belly button like oh baby i'm looking at harry styles i'm like do you know where the vagina is harry because you seem a bit high my friend um and again i love the actually i love that overhead shot i think it's beautifully shot um but it again there's that scene I don't know if you need it in the movie, but let's even keep that one. The sex scene where Chris Pine's character is watching them. I don't know. A, it serves no fucking story purpose. And B, when you get to the third act, it makes even less fucking sense. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yes. Okay. So I, I don't really have much to say about the first one. I wasn't really paying attention in terms of Harry Styles Position. fucking head placement. Yeah. I was just like, you know, whatever. Um, I was just like, man. Well, well, if you if you're if you're doing that, when you get to the third act reveal, and you find out he does all this stuff, and he never gets any reward, right? Like that fucker never gets off. He's only getting fucking Florence Pugh off the whole time. Like that guy was now a hero in the story, right? But in terms of the well, Chris I mean, Pine he, thing, he kind of makes comment about like I'm doing everything for you, right? Yes, but in terms of the Chris Pine one, I think when you have that and, you know, you know, you have that interaction and then she doesn't say anything, they continue, he leaves. But then when he makes the comment at the dinner table saying, you know, I invited you into my bed and Harry Styles looked like, what the fuck? Like, that's the one that made no sense to me because I'm like, you're literally like when it's it's revealed, it's like you know everything that's going on with her. So you know nothing happened. But it was like made for shock for some reason. Yeah, it's again, like I don't understand the point of that scene at all. Like it doesn't make any fucking sense. You know what I mean? Well, it's literally like, hey, we're going to fucking brainstorm what's something cool to watch. Like, fuck, he's going down on her. Boom, done. That hasn't been done. <laughs> It's like, all right. Next at the we... boss's house while the boss watches. Boom, check done. Yeah, the boss walks in. You know, <laughs> we're we're gonna do a reverse fucking you know porn hub where you know it's not um, you know the girl walks in uh, a, a girl walks in on a two couple and they join. Now it's gonna be a guy walk in and he's just gonna watch and she gets off more on it and then he walks away. Boom, done. Max masculinity. So uh, one of the things I was looking at, I'm just looking up here is. If you actually want to see a much better representation of like feminist sex that has like oral and stuff like that, one of the sexiest sex scenes that I've seen in 2022 is from Test Pattern, which uh, got nominated for Best Female Lead at the 2020 Independent Spirit Awards. 
that's a fantastic film. Uh, I had a lot to say about it when we were talking about, I, th I think we did a whole Indie Spirit Award episode. I, I feel like we talked about the Indie Spirit Awards quite a, quite a bit. Did we not, Scott? Sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, check out Test Pattern. Uh, if you're looking for like a scene like that, like as if you're a filmmaker or you're just a fucking pervert, like it's a better scene. It's more romantic. It's sexier. And it's also in a better fucking movie. So watch Test Pattern. Don't watch this fucking film. Uh, yeah, I mean, just watch the trailer. That'll give you enough of the set de decoration and the fucking uh, cinematography. Don't bother fucking wasting your time on the movie. Although it is available on um, HBO H Max. HBO okay. Max. So if you've got that, you can watch it for free. Fine. You'll you'll get bored. Just turn it off when you get bored. So is That's this like it? Yeah, I was yeah, gonna go. say, is this a new segment? Like. Uh you know, whacking off with Chris, <laughs> like where to go. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's part of Scott's cock. It's the uh, second. <laughs> no, of we're expanding. <laughs> and that is our wrap for the day. Please like, and subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends. If you want to get a hold of us, reach us at the www.howdyoulikethatmovie.com. So I knew this was going to be a fucking waste of my time going in, and it was 100% exactly what I thought it was going to be, a fucking waste of my fucking time. I did go in with very low expectations, hoping it would uh, exceed them, but somehow that third act made them lower than what I thought. <laughs> So were you were your expectations exceeded up to the third act? Yeah, like I, like her performance, like literally, it was like, okay, like I'm driving down the highway, and her performance would be like, okay, I see some potholes, but you know, I can still veer towards them. But once it away got away from it, them, away yeah, from yeah, them, you can veer, there, yeah, you don't veer towards yeah, potholes. Yeah, true, away from them. Uh, but then when it got to the uh, the third act, it's like, oh shit, I just fell into a volcano and I can't get out. <laughs> Right? Like, like, where the fuck did this volcano come from? <laughs> I think that's a good place to fucking leave up. Uh, check out our episode of Black Panther next week. <laughs> Production by Rod Shaver, Vader Monkey Productions.